I'd really like to know what goes on inside me and find out what it's like to be healthy. So I thought very hard and I wished I was small. If I could get inside somebody, I would know it all. And all of a sudden, like a boat from the blue, I started to shrink. Believe me, it's true. And there was Blot's body lying not very far. She was having a nap, but her mouth was ajar. If you'd like to know what she's like inside, stick around a while and I'll take you for a ride. Hello there. I've got a bit of a problem today. Perhaps you can think of a way to help me out. Or rather, in. You see, today I want to get inside Blod's head. Right to the control centre. Her brain. And I've been racking my brain all day. Feel this. Go on. Hard, isn't it? It's your skull. And what's the skull made of? Yes, bone. So how am I going to get through that? Tell you something, though. Whatever goes on in here must be pretty important to have all this bone protecting it. Come on, brain, think. I spy with my little eye something beginning with E. I, I. Well, one thing is certain. I can't crawl in there to get to the brain. Hasn't Blood got nice eyes, though? Lovely colour. Have a look at each other's eyes. What do you spy? The coloured part is called the iris. Iris was the name of the Greek goddess of the rainbow. That's a good name, isn't it? Because the iris can be many colours. Blue, brown. What other colours can you see? The black circle in the middle is called the pupil. That lets all the light into your eye. But where does it go from there, though? Oh, I wish I could get into Blood's brain to find out. Are your eyes wet or dry? And why do we have eyelashes, do you think? It's important to keep the eyes clean and look after them. Nothing must ever get into them. Our eyes are very important to us. Why? It's one way to find out about the world about us. Seeing things is very important. It's one of our senses. Here we are by the ear. Hello, hello. You hear with your ears. Hearing is another of our senses. All the noise around us goes in there, but nothing else must ever go in. Why do you think the ear is shaped like this? You can't see all the ear, only the part on the outside. This is the part that collects all the sound, the pinna, so that it all gets inside. But what happens to it then? I think the brain has something to do with it. I really must get inside to find out. What does this do? Well, I can breathe through this. I tried to get in there before, when I followed the air into Blood's lungs. Remember what happened? I didn't get very far up there, did I? The little hair stopped me, and the tickling made Blood sneeze. I've still got the bruises. You should never poke anything into your nose because it could block your breathing. That's very important. Well, I can't get inside Blood's brain that way, then can I? Poor, what's that smell? You can do something else with your nose, of course. You can smell things. Smell is another one of our senses. Smelling can tell us things about the world around us, too. What do you think these people can smell? What are your favourite smells? So, OK, the smell gets up our noses. But how does it tell us what the smell is? It's got to be something to do with the brain. Oh, how can I get into the brain? Nothing should ever be pushed into the eye or the ear or the nose. Let's think of another way in. Can you think of another sense? Oh, I need some energy. I can't think without food. Oh, thank you. Oh, it's a nice green colour, isn't it? I can see that with one of my senses. Mmm, smells nice too. It doesn't make much noise. Well, it would if I bit into it. Mmm. Mmm. Tastes nice too. Ah, taste. That's another one of our senses. Mm. We taste things inside our mouth. 
But which part of the mouth does the tea sting? Oh, yes. Yum, yum, yum. Mm. Yes, the tongue. Tongues are very useful. Comfortable, too. <sighs> Have a look at your tongue. Does it look smooth or rough? Dry or wet? Those little bumps are called taste buds. Your tongue has about 3,000 taste buds. 3,000. They sense the taste of whatever they touch. But how does the tongue tell us what it's tasting? Oh, I must get to the brain. Let's see if I can get there through the mouth then. Well, I remember where this goes, do you? This is where the food goes into the stomach. Well, that's going the wrong way. And down here, this is where the air goes. I'm not going back down there. That tube goes to the lungs. Can't get to the brain that way. Let's think again, like that's four senses so far. Can you think of another one? What about this then? What's happening here? <coughs> All these people are feeling something. You feel things touching you on your skin. That's the sense of touch. I wonder if old Blood can help me. Hi there, Blood. How are you? Well, well, well. You took your time saying hello, didn't you? Staring through my eyes, shouting into my ears, trying to get up my nose, as usual. And what's that horrible perfume you're wearing? Then you made yourself at home on my taste buds, and now you're sitting on my hand. Sorry, Blood. I didn't think you knew I was here. Of course I know. My eyes, ears, nose, tongue and skin have been sending me messages. I know you're there, all right. Sending messages? Wait a minute. So, the senses send messages to the brain, right? I've just had a brainwave. If I look in front of your eyes, Blood, you could turn me into a message. Then I could get into the brain. <laughs> I feel a bit dizzy, though. Oh. Don't you dare touch anything. Ah, oh, blood, don't panic. It's just great to be in the control center. Doesn't it look a bit like a walnut in here? But actually, the brain works a bit like a computer. All the messages come in here. Do you remember from where? The skin, the tongue, the eyes, the nose, and ears. That way, the brain knows what's going on and decides what to do. It then sends messages to the body to tell it what to do. Look, I'll show you. Let's look at them all in turn. Hang on a minute. Who do you think you are? Ah, oh, blah. Don't worry now. Trust me. I'll just mess that. Yes. Walk forward for me, please, blood. Right. There's a message coming in from the eyes to say there's a chair in the way. So the brain tells the hands to lift up the chair and put it back down again. Right, you can carry on walking now? Yes, that's what I call control. The eyes do a very important job. How can we look after them? The optician keeps an eye on our eyes. Hello, Mrs. Wynn. Hello. Hello. These are your children, are they? They are. This is Catherine and this is Richard. Hello. Have you come to have your eyes tested today? Yeah. That's great. Are either of the children having any problems at all? They don't seem to be, no, not at the moment, no. That's lovely. What about you, Catherine? Can you see the blackboard all right at school? Yeah. And Richard, how are you getting on with your reading at okay. school? The children are both doing fine at school, are yeah, they? Yeah, they seem to be, yeah. That's good. Is their general health okay? It's very good. We don't suffer from headaches or anything, no. Nothing, nothing like no. that? No complaints of eyes hurting or red or watery eyes? No, you, you don't, do you? No. No, that's good. Right. Well, should we go and test your eyes, then? Do you want to go first, Richard? Yeah. Come on, then. If you keep your head very still now and just look over to Mummy. That's it. And now up at the ceiling. Good. Look at my fingers wiggling here. And if you keep your head still now, look down at your shoes. That's very good. What are you looking for there? If you'd like to look at the picture on the wall there, I'm looking at that red area at the back um, where all the blood vessels are. And I'm just checking to see that the eye is nice and healthy. And Richard's eye is lovely and healthy, okay? 
So we so won't be needing glasses then? No, no, he's fine. I'm going to pop these big glasses on. OK? I'm just going to cover up one eye. And if you can have a look over there in the mirror, can you see all the letters? Yes. That's lovely. I'm going to put a lens in. Just tell me if it looks better with it in or if it looks better without it there. Does that one make any difference at all? Yes, a little bit. A little bit better? a little bit blurred there. Right, that's lovely. And I'm going to put another one in. Does that one make any difference? No. Is it smaller and blacker or just exactly the same? That's without and that's with. It's about the same, really. That's too. great. Does Catherine need glasses? No, her eyes are fine, but it's important she has a routine test every six months. Can you go and try the glasses on anyway, then? Yes, that would be fine. I can't make it out. I'm long-sighted, that's why. I can't see things that are very close to my eyes. Well, put your glasses on, then. I was about oh. to. That's it. Right, let's have a look. Elin, get out of my brain now. Oh, Blod. Let me stay a little bit longer. I'll behave. Oh, Blod. There's a message coming in from the ears to say that there's a bell ringing. It's the telephone. So the brain's telling your legs to move forward and go to the phone. Right, it's, it's on the left, Blod. Turn round now, there you go. And use your right hand and pick the phone up. Yes, and now say hello. Hello? Oh, it's for you. Oops. Uh, uh, could you tell them I'll ring back? <laughs> hmm. Look at these people and think about the messages that the brain is getting and the messages the brain is sending. Hello, still here. Oh, that was loud. Listening to very loud noise for too long could hurt our ears. How can we protect them, do you think? Some people have difficulty hearing. Think what it must be like. How do ears work, anyway? This part of your ear is called a pinna, and this is the pinna here in my model. The pinna collects sound, and sound passes down the ear canal to the eardrum here. This part of the ear is called the outer ear. We talked about the ear canal and said how dangerous it can be using cotton buds to clean inside it, because you can break the eardrum. When sound passes down the ear canal, it makes the eardrum here vibrate. On the other side of the eardrum are three tiny bones joined together and they vibrate together with an airspace around them. And the eustachian tube here on my model leads from the back of the throat to the middle ear and it lets air up into the middle ear. Some children have hearing problems because the eustachian tube isn't working properly and when air doesn't go into the middle ear it fills up with fluid and the eardrum can't vibrate as well, and the three bones can't move as well either. Those children go into hospitals sometimes if medicine hasn't helped to clear the problem. Now the third bone here, the stirrup, rests on this part of the ear that's called the inner ear. And when the stirrup vibrates, it makes the cochlea, which is this part, send a message along the auditory nerve, which is the nerve of hearing, to the brain then the brain hears the sounds and can make sense of them. Some children have hearing difficulties because there's a problem here in the cochlea. The cochlea doesn't work properly. Those children can't have medicine or operations to help them. Children with this problem, like Betson, wear hearing aids. But even with hearing aids, speech is difficult for them to hear and to understand. They need special help from teachers in schools. Some children will use signing as well as watching and listening and using their hearing aids. 
Somewhere. Thank you, eyes. Oh, it's chicken. Right then, put some in your mouth then, blood. Let's taste it. <gasps> Ow, oh, it's too hot. Blow on it first to cool it down a bit. Right, loud try. Mmm, yes, nice. What are these messages? Hello, Dad. Uh, you need to shave. The nose and the tongue and the skin are very important. They tell us all sorts of things about what's happening around us. Can you think of how you should look after your nose and tongue? Are there some things that you shouldn't taste or smell? And what about your skin? What could you do to protect that? People looking after their skins. Senses. If you protect your eyes, nose, tongue, ears and skin, they will look after you. They will send messages to your brain and help you make all sorts of decisions about your life. So help your senses to help you. Ah, blood? What's that noise, blood? What are you doing? I found a way to get rid of you. Okay, okay I'm going, I'm going. You're a real spoil spot. Do you know that blood? You'll see me and hear me next time. Don't forget to bring your brains with you. Bye! Now that I am tiny, just think where I can go. I must visit every corner till it's time for me to grow. The stomach and the lungs, not forgetting the heart. Large and small intestine, I can get to every part. Clean blood's teeth, lie on her tongue. Crawl in her foot plate, lounge in her lung. Swim in her blood, have a peep at her brain. I'd love to look around and hear it. How she hears, how she sees as well. Thank you, Blood, for letting me come in and see and find out what it's like to be. Don't forget to.